Hi, Soul Family. How are you? <clears throat> we are um, doing a reading right now because it got kind of quiet for my work. I'm supposed to be getting ready to go to Sedona. And uh, song right now, you don't want my heart. You just want attention. You don't like the thought of me with someone new. Interesting, because um, I'm getting a lot about that, about somebody coming back to us from the someone that we used to be connected to that was totally dysfunctional. And um, we've moved on and we've done a lot better for ourselves and all of a sudden out of the woodwork comes this one thinking, but they feel like they've got the right. They feel like they can just slide in and out of your life. They feel they have the right to slide in and out of your life, but they're about to get another thing presented to them. <laughs> <laughs> so interesting about that. This weather right now is quite congested, right? It wants to rain really bad. It's going to. It'll probably start till, no, wait until I get into my car. And uh, interesting, after yesterday's um, reading that was so positive, and why does it go that way, right? It was so happy and positive and lighthearted, and <clears throat> you know, it's about manifesting our future and, and um, holding in positive thought. No matter what the circumstances are, see it the way you want to see it, right? And song right now, this conversation ain't coming easily. I know it's getting late. What do you see? We say we leave this place. So there's a conversation between another and you that are, it's going to be difficult, apparently. And uh, someone's hesitating, but somebody's moving forward, so it looks like they got to move quickly. <clears throat> I uh, had really lucid, intense dreams last night after such wonderful thoughts and feelings. And I watched a movie last night with my cats, sat there on the couch, and uh, it was really positive too. The, me the, the message that I got out of it was, was positive. It was actually about somebody who thought that they would go out there and, you know, the, they, they didn't even know who they were. They, they pretended to be whoever anybody wanted them to be. It literally showed a story about a guy who created this app and he was a stand-in, an actor. Like, I'll be whatever you want me to be on this date. Whatever you are desiring, I fit that mold. So it's kind of, think about somebody doing that, right, in your life. Whoever you're with, you, you mold to whatever they want you to be. You don't even know who you are yourself. And that was what the messages were yesterday, right? Who are you? Have you been doing all of these things, trying to please other people or fit the mold that other people have for you? And in the end, you know, he was he was really cocky. He he was so focused on some on, on this end goal. He was trying to get into Harvard, right? And didn't have the money, so he created this app and he was gonna people paid him to go out and, and be his date. He was an escort. He was a male escort. Um, male prostitute. Uh, no sex involved, but male prostitute. And uh, was earning his way to get 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 the money and uh, one of the people that he was first paid to go out with, uh, she was really different, and uh, family thought that this person was very dif dif difficult, and they strike, struck up a friendship, and uh, she started to have feelings for him, and he didn't understand that, and they agreed to uh, pretend to be each other's dates, and that's what they were doing. He had his eye on someone else and she had her eye on someone else. She ends up meeting the guy and deciding this is not somebody I'm interested in at all. And then she starts feeling something for this guy. He has no clue and he's intent on, on this other girl and she is completely out of his league, right? And they both told this lie. And I keep thinking about that song, even though we're liars and we start each other's fires. It talked about these friends and it was this these two. And, uh, she lied and pretended to, you know, asked him to go on this date with her. And it was, it was a setup and just to make the other people jealous or get them interested. So, and then they were going to have this great big breakup so that they could each go to the prospective people, right? They just wanted to get into, into the company of these people. He, him interested in this really fancy girl, this girl from a very wealthy background. And she with this guy that she just thought was really hot. And, uh, so he ends up being really boring and he's, she's not interested in all. He's weird. She thinks he's weird. And he goes out with the girl and he tells her the truth about who he is. I'm not, you know, who you think I am. I don't have all this money. I don't come from a wealthy society. And um, I just did that to get to know you. And he says, I'm sorry. And she goes, 
you are sorry. And he goes, I just felt like you were too good for me. And she says, you're right. I am too good for you because you're a liar. And then she walks away and he's like, what? What? <laughs> With his mouth hanging open. So then he goes back to the other girl. And, you know, the, the fancy one dumps him and she goes, what's going on? And he'd blown her off, you know. And uh, she says, what's going on? They're at this dance. And he says, would you like to dance? And she goes, where's your date? And he says, oh, she's gone or whatever. And he says, so what do you think? And she says, yeah, no thanks. She goes, I'm not back up. And he's like, what? And she walks away from him. She goes, I'm not your freaking backup, you know? Second choice, the, you know, you, you took the pick of the litter and then it didn't work out with her and now you're gonna come back to me? I'm your backup? No, I don't think so. So she walks away and he's feeling really bad and he starts recognizing, you know? He decides that, you know, that, that it's funny, I was just about to say job that he wanted to get into, he'd applied for this job, but he had applied for this college, but same, same idea. And he wanted it so bad. And his dad was saying, you know, why can't you go to the alma mater, the old, the old school, the old alma mater, you know, the way it was, you know, what I went to, that, that's the local college. No, it's not, it's not enough. I need to be, you know, nobody looks at the, that's like looking at the old girl across the street or where, 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 you know, Harvard is like, you know, she's, she drives a, a, a Mercedes Benz and she's at all the elite society parties and blah, 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 blah. And so that was his idea, right? He had to aspire to that. And which kind of made it look like his, what his father did wasn't, wasn't good enough for him, his lifestyle, right? Which he didn't even have yet, but he was, a, he was attain, trying to attain that, aspiring to that. So a while later, she call, he calls the girl and asks her to meet him. And she goes to meet him. And he says, she says something about the Harvard, you know, she helped him get into this, you know, is he gonna go? And she, he says, no, I've decided not to. I decided I'm gonna go to the local. So he decided not to take that job. He decided not to go after what he thought he wanted. Because he says, I don't even, I don't even know what I wanna be after that. I was so focused on getting to that place. Interesting how I knocked my glasses, right? I was so focused to getting to that place that I never even thought about what happens after I get there. What am I gonna do after I get there? The rich girl said, you know, he says, what are you gonna do when you graduate? What are you gonna do when you get there? And she had it all planned out. She knew what she wanted. And uh, she says, what about you? And he goes, I don't know. He goes, I've been so focused on getting there that I never really thought about what I'll do when I, once I got there. And he goes, I guess, you know, it doesn't really matter, does it? And she said, yeah, it does. Like, you have no idea where you're going in your life? Yeah, it does matter. So. Even that girl that he felt was out of his league, she knew where she was going. She had a plan. She, had a, she, she, she figured out what it is that she wanted to do in her life, and she was going towards it, right? So her walking away from him because he was a liar is that um, because he's, he pretended to have this fancy car. He pretended to have this great job. He pretended to live in this really high society place. And then she finds out that he lied about everything. Remember we've had this, the message about that? I've been lying, lying, lying this whole time. And now you know, I'm a bad liar. And she dumps his ass, and then he goes back to the other. So he sits there and he tells her, I'm not gonna go to Harvard, I've decided not to take that. I'm, I'm gonna stick around. And she goes, good for you. And he goes, how's it going for you? And she goes, it's going fine. And so then he says something to her, I can't remember what it is, and he leaves this paper and he leaves. And so she opens it up, and basically it's a, it's a entrance exam. You know, he, tried, he was supposed to write an entrance exam in order to get into Harvard, right? He had to prove why. Why would we want to accept you in our school? And basically, it was to get in with her. He wrote her this letter, and he said, I, I, I realized that I was so full of myself and arrogant. I didn't even know who I was or what I was going for. And I treated my father... Oh, I'm getting emotional. I looked at my father like his life wasn't as good as mine. Like he hadn't become what I was gonna become. And I looked down at his, his alma mater. I looked down at, you know, what he had done. And I, I, I was reaching for people that I thought were above me. And I was just a liar, I was just a fake. And then people that were actually my friend and, and tried to help me, I treated with absolute disrespect. He says, so I don't know if you would want to accept someone like this in your alma mater in your school, in your, and he called her, you know, why her name? He says, but I'm making my application and I would like to try again and I would like to come as a friend. I would like to, and he, he had blown his friends off too. He had a best friend that was gay 
at work and they hung out but as he started getting and that guy helped him get to this place where he was going to get this you know he, he created this app where he was going to create this little business for himself but once he had done that with his friend he pushed him away you know didn't have time for him and he didn't understand why the friend was mad all of a sudden the guy was gone and he's like where where have you where are you and he's like you know he changed his job he worked at a different time he didn't want to be around him and and he goes to the guy and he says the, the new guy at work and he goes where's where's Murph and he goes he's not working and he goes I'm working I'm covering his shift and he goes oh just for today and he goes no for always he goes he said that you were an arrogant son of a bitch <laughs> And he's like, wow. So all of a sudden, everything starts becoming clear to this guy, right? He's pushed his old friends away. They're not good enough for him. Or, or, you know, he's too busy to even notice. It wasn't so much that he felt that he was too good for them because he didn't feel like he was too good for that guy. He just didn't give him any time, which is the same thing, right? And the person, that had, the girl that had done all these things to help him, all of a sudden, you know, he doesn't understand why she's upset. She's always been my friend. She's always been there. But all of a sudden, you know, I'm so focused on getting in that hot girl and, and go to that, be accepted in that hot crowd when in all reality, he doesn't live there. He lives in this other town, right? In that torn up town. <laughs> That's where he lived. He pretended. The whole thing was, was bullshit. So in the end, he, he said, if you're willing to accept my application. So she met up with him. And she was nice to him. She talked. And he goes, how do you feel about my application? And she says, I'll accept it on a temporary basis. I'm not committing to this, you know, basically. So she let him back in, into her life. But it was kind of like, you know, let's, let's just see if you, your money is where your mouth is because so far all you've done was, was bullshit everybody, right? So at the end, it was good. It was a good, he got, he got the message, right? He. He didn't even know why he was, he felt it was so important at one time to get to that place. And when he got there, it wasn't all that he thought it was cracked up to be. And, you know, he hurt his friends and he hurt his dad and he hurt his girl that, that was such a friend to him and always been a friend to him. He hurt everybody. And he didn't even know why because he didn't even know what he was going to do once he got there. He just was going to get there. So I went to sleep last night and I have these dreams and they were awful. <laughs> they were they were terrible. I, I was showing them as my friends that I, some people that I knew in, um, actually from all over the place. One was my friend that runs a, a spiritual shop, right? Another is a musician that travels around the world. He's very famous. And uh, the one that ran the spiritual shop, um, he worked there. He was in, he was there, a part of it. But he became very abusive. And when he drank, he was very, he was scary. He was very aggressive. He had a, a little boy, a child. And, uh, she fired him. She goes, I don't want you, I don't want you around because you're, you're toxic, you know? And so I was in a car and I was with my friend and I was going to try and start this car and, and, and we couldn't get the brakes to stop. We couldn't stop this car. It kept moving forward. And finally we pulled up a hill and we, we were able to get it to stop. So we felt good about that. And I went back into this place and my friend who used to own this, this spiritual shop, she's now taking her things out. She's picking and taking things and not even the best of her things. She's leaving the best of things behind, which is interesting because it's kind of what I'm doing, right? I'm not taking my stuff when I go to Sedona. I'm only going to be taking some things. And so that's what this girl was doing. She was, you know, packing these things up. And this, it, this arrogant man, this, this guy, and he was a black guy. And, and in a, it's not nationality black. It means something different in dreams. Um, wish I'd looked that up before I told you guys. I could put it in the in the in the interpretation or the notes of the video. But um, it could have it could have represented a person that was actually black, dark skinned. But it, actually, in a dream, it means something different. So this one has this this one when he drinks, he's obnoxious and he's scary and he's abusive and he hurts people. And he has a child, a little boy, and he starts taking over her shop, and she's she's afraid of him, and. He says to me, I, I'm going to hire a hitman to take that guy out. One of the guys that was working with him, he was going to hire a hitman. And I'm like, oh, my God. So I go to the guy and I say, dude, he's going to take you out. You need to go. So the guy takes off. He, he, he thought he was in on the team. But no, this guy is like, he has no loyalty to anyone. And now he's controlling everything, right? And he's this, he's this guy who plays this musical instrument. And what's interesting is... This woman is a friend of his, works with him, right? And he has this little boy. So somebody goes, I go to lay down with this little boy, and the little boy doesn't want to go to sleep, and he's being kind of a brat. And I said, come on, it's time to go to bed. So he lays down. So he's sleeping. And then the father, the, the musician, 
he says to this other girl that's working for him, come here, I need you to, f and, and, and what's interesting is this machine, on both sides of the machine, it needed, a, it needed you to fan it. Now remember I got yesterday, um, the ones following you aren't always your fans. And the night before I heard in my, in my audio messages from Spirit, the King of Wands is a Leo. And then I saw a picture of a, of a lion chasing this antelope. And, and when I looked at the lion, it was a female lion though. And that was the King of Wands. So it's either a very aggressive female Leo or it's a gay Leo man, okay? And then I heard on the radio um, and, I, and I'm not going to say the name because you'll know who it is. This lion says to, it's, it's these two lions and, and it's, a, it's a commercial. And he says to his partner, Jay, that's the first initial of his name. Let's go chase some antelopes, which is what I watched. This Leo, the fan. So basically I'm this one, this one is chasing, right? I'm the antelope. And he says, I don't want to, or I don't know, that, everyone who chases you isn't always a fan, right? So I'm thinking this is about me. Maybe it's not, maybe it's about someone else. And this J person says, yeah, if it's not got fur, I'm not interested in it. Antelope, Does, do antelopes have fur? I don't think so. So it, that's interesting. So cats have fur, cat hair, is that fur? Um, and I thought to myself, interesting, so the Leo following me that's not my fan is a partner with this J person. And uh, this, this very abusive man who's playing this musical instrument, now think about playing. I'm, so, I, I'm tired of being playing like a, like a fiddle. I'm, I'm tired of being playing like, played like a violin. So somebody's playing you, right? But he's playing this musical instrument. Now a musical instrument is something that makes music, it sings. So think about whatever comes to mind for you. And it needs one on each side. It needs a fan on each side, right? And so this girl says, I, I, I no, I've, I've, I've got to go. I'm not staying. I've got to go to work. I've got to go home. I've got, I've got things to do. And he says, I need you to do this. And this person says, no, I've got to go. I've got things I've got to do. And he, and he puts his, and, and before that he had called for the little boy. And someone says, well, he's sleeping. And he says, go get him, get him. I want my son here. So he gets him. And when the girl says, no, she's not going to do what he wants her to do, fan this, this, you know, I don't need a fan, right? I don't need fans. I need friends. I don't need fans. But this one wants a fan on either side of this musical instrument that he's playing. And she's saying no. So then he puts his hand on the little boy's leg, threatening. And he says, how else will I take care of him? And it's like basically stopping that person from leaving. That person wants to go, but he's threatening the child. So by doing that, he is controlling everybody, right? Now, I got Aries. You're going to have a sudden trip that you're going to have to take. Well, I didn't realize I was going to go to Sedona. Now I'm going. Sudden trip. While you're on the road, you're going to hear of a death. And I heard the death is going to be the death of this very evil man, this man that has lied to everyone, manipulated everyone, hurt a lot of people. Now, is this a literal death? I don't think so. I think it's a symbolic death, the death of that situation, right? It's going to happen while I'm on the road. So remember those two guys that were riding the horses, and I knew them both. And one of them was a musician, and the other one was quiet. I knew them both well. And the father came in and said, where's my daughter? And the one that was the musician is the one who answered. And, well, she said she was coming. And the father said, you were supposed to care for her. Now she's gone out into the storm. So here I'm going out into the storm, right? So I wake up from this dream and it's a pretty awful dream because he is threatening to kill people, which is ending situations. He is threatening his own child. He's obnoxious when he drinks and scary and brutal. He's controlling everyone. And my friend that owned that spiritual place, he's controlling her too. She's, everyone's afraid of this man. This is a, a nasty, evil man. And uh, I wake up from that dream and I'm just like, wow. And I'm writing down the, you know, the information. And oh, there was one more part. Remember the one, I don't, if it doesn't have fur, I'm not interested in it, right? Let's go chase them. And uh, there was a kitten that my friend that owned the spirit, she owned this kitten. It was her, no, it wasn't her kitten, it was in there. And he said, get me that kitten. He was gonna do something to that kitten. He was gonna hurt that kitten. And so she, the one who owned the spiritual store said, take him, take this kitten, 
quickly take this kitten. So I take the kitten and I'm like, what am I going to do with this kitten? But if, but I got to get it out of there because this guy's going to kill it. This guy is just nasty, right? So I wake up from this dream and I'm shaken, right? Because you're in your dream for a while after you wake up. And I get a, there's two phone calls that I have missed. Two already. It's like court, it's not even, I don't even know what time it was, like 7.30, right? And the calls had come quite a bit before that. And then there's a voice message right after that. And it's my landlord out in Sedona, my old landlord. And he's like, Sherry, where are you? You said you were, I thought you were going to be here. And then he says, you said you were going to call. And I'm like, what? I said that I would call today sometime, right? And that I would be going out there tomorrow and we would most likely be meeting on Sunday. And I thought, what's going on? I don't, that's pretty aggressive. That's pretty. And, 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 and so I said to my landlord, I don't like the way that feels. It didn't feel right to me. Now, remember, we have to remember how we feel. And he says, well, it could be a misunderstanding. He says, call him and say, hey, you know, I don't, I'm not in the habit of calling people at 7.30 in the morning. Now, my landlord, he's up really early. He, he's like 4.30 in the morning. He's awake, right? Getting busy, getting ready to go, getting doing things. He's got his mind on stuff he has to get done. He's a really nice guy. He was my friend. I like him. But it, was, it didn't sit right with me. So I called and I said, hey, what's going on? And he goes, hey, so I thought you were going to be here. Oh, you were going to call me. And I said, I am calling you. I said, I would call you today. You wanted me to call you on Friday. I'm calling you today. And I said, I'll be, be out there tomorrow. And he goes, oh, I misunderstood. He goes, I'm out here at the house because I'm painting. I'm doing all So he's busy, right? He's got, once he, he's ready to go, it's like, okay, I'm ready to go now. So now that I'm ready to go, where's everybody? Right? That's what he's used to. <clears throat> and I'm like, my dad's like that too. And so I said, um, no. I'm, I'm here, I'm getting my stuff together. And I said, I don't call people at 7.30 in the morning. I would have waited later to call you. And he says, actually, you know what? That works out just as well. He says, cause I'm here at the house. I'm doing some painting. It'll work out better. So call me when you get here and we'll take it from there. And everything was, was fine again, right? So I had, uh, and, and, and probably why I was feeling that way is because I watched what I'd watched in my dream. So um, I think I need to get the information on because that probably has a lot to do with the situation. Hold on. Because I don't want you guys... To, and it's interesting because I have a client that's been having issues with her guy. And he's an African-American guy. And I dream with her a lot. And it's been pretty difficult. But things just started to look like they were going to try and fix things. And then I thought... And she wrote to me and I said, wow, I had a dream. And I said, I wonder if it's about you. And I told her it was quite unsettling. And she said, well, that dream isn't for me because we had a great talk and everything is wonderful. So that's a message, right? That message isn't for you. If this is not your scenario, don't try and fit it. It doesn't fit every situation, right? And it's also a message to me. Well, that may not be my story. That's somebody that I'm watching or there's something in it that I'm needing to understand. So what we're gonna look up is a black man. To dream of a black person represents an aspect of your personality that feels good surviving or feeling good proving your, itself. Feeling good accepting yourself the way you are. Preferring to feel good surviving emptiness before all else. Placing a priority on keeping happiness or avoiding jealousy before all else. Powerful strength to hang on. Powerful motivation to remain as you are or stand on your ground. A powerful need to remain hopeful. A militant attitude about serving, surviving disaster. Feeling good believing in yourself and doing whatever it takes to stay that way. Positively, black people represent keeping hope alive in dangerous or terrible situations, risking everything to stay safe as though nothing else mattered, trying hard to achieve what is considered impossible, rising above when everything is on the line, keeping something wonderful away from an asshole at all costs. Fearless about making a mistake because you can just laugh at, at being stupid to take it seriously. Laughing at a bad situation because you have nothing left to lose. Feeling good, not being weak. Negatively, black people represent an excessive need to prove yourself. Dishonestly provo proving yourself or refusing to give up in an argument when you know you were wrong. Now think about that guy in the movie. This is what I watched. Um, holding yourself back because you place too much priority on feeling good. Prefer, preferring to survive a problem, enjoying yourself as a priority before having to take serious action, perfectly serious. Proving yourself that makes other people jealous. Persistently believing in yourself too much that it costs you in other ways. Hasty or dangerous choices because you're too concerned with getting ahead or liking something. It may also 
apply to pleasure seeking that is dangerous or risky. You or someone else that is taking a big risk to put their own feelings before others. Desperation to avoid being laughed at can also reflect feelings about the threat of total loss, destroying yourself with your own jealousy or over eagerness, wasting time holding on to opportunities, enjoying keeping other people jealous of what you have or what you've accomplished, feeling good proving, pr proving yourself to someone's face with success that lets you brag or show off powerfully. That's the guy I watched, right? A troublesome personality trait that is proving itself excessively to maintain feeling good. Negatively, it may also represent jealous, spiteful, or revengefulness. Aggressive avoidance of danger, threats, or jealousy. Aggressively avoiding allowing someone to get ahead of you. Aggressively stubbornness that is rude or angry. Vindictive humor or laughter after losing. Proving yourself in ways that are mean and only show off. They can also represent er arrogantly avoiding facing your problems or cheating others to keep yourself away from losing at all costs. Desperation, you or someone else has to avoid jealousy. Selfishness that does it all, does all it can do to avoid losing the number one spot. An arrogant all or nothing mentality. Proving oneself in a manner achieves the goal by disrespecting the rules or challenge. Feeling good achieving your goal through low standards that insult others. Feeling good achieving a goal robs others of integrity. They may, may represent powerful anger or insensitivity if you feel someone else's feelings aren't being addressed first. Spite or vicious jealousy because you aren't feeling good about getting, getting your way. Arrogance or meanness if you don't get to win at something or that you haven't gotten to win at something. It can also represent positive aspects if they are personal friends or celebrities that you associate positive qualities with. Well, this person, they, they, this person that I watched was very talented right? They were very talented, but I didn't see anything positive in, in what this person was doing. This person was threatening people. This person was threatening to kill people, have people killed off, meaning fired, right? Could be that. Um, was using their child as a weapon. And you, like, it, you, you see that between families, between maybe that was his ex-wife, right? Using that child as a weapon, um, as, as a means to hurt and it's at the sacrifice of the child and that child loved his father loved his father but the father was using that child so on rare occasions it reflects cultural pride that a black person feels about themselves if race is a serious issue to them um, okay I think that's That's it. Because the other items that, that are shown there don't have anything to do with what I watched in my dream. So that's what I watched in my dreams. And then I got that kind of, you know, comp that phone call. Now, this is giving me a message as well. That you had this, um, say you had that relationship, a relationship with someone, and this is the way it went. And then on the heels of that, you get this other situation, and you're thinking... Um, you're projecting onto that. Now, where I live right now, my landlord's my friend. We get along great, right? Um, we help one another. He watches my cats when, when I go away, he, I watch his. We, 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 we're, we're friends. We like each other. We get along well together. So to have a different um, re, uh, way of speaking to me or handling with a prospective landlord, I would, that, that kind of pushes me back, right? Ooh, I don't know about that. Now, he was my friend too before and and we always got along quite well he was very business like always very business um, more logical whereas my landlord here is more emotional right so there's a difference in personality but we were they were friends as well so it could alter my way of looking at it because of the way I've been living here um, so I decided that it's very important for me um, to do a reading and I want you guys also this is not going to be for an entire week. Most of the readings are for a week. This is just going to be through the weekend till Monday, okay? And we're gonna use two decks. We're gonna use the Shapeshifters and the Wisdom of the Oracle by Colette Baron reed Now here we've got the Golden Phoenix. Something you thought dead suddenly burst back to life. We told you someone was coming back, right? Now, it can go in two ways. It can go in two ways. There can be, because I've had, I've already had a couple people coming back, right, from my past. And uh, the situation doesn't necessarily mean that it's the same, sa same for each one. You know, the one that you want to avoid uh, is obviously not that, uh, you know, something you thought dead. Maybe you thought it was done and over with. I, I've, 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 I've moved on. I've, that's, that's over. 
right? And all of a sudden it bursts back. So we're going to find out what's going to happen with that. We don't want to project um, onto the situation. And I've chosen this, this particular split ends. Interesting. I don't normally have split ends. I just got my hair cut a while back, right? And I had it layered. And I'm looking down and I've got split ends. It's a message. Split ends. Ending. Split. Split ends. I'm thinking about that guy, that arrogant guy. He sounds like that man that was controlling everyone, right? Controlling everyone, was firing people, which to me, that's having a hitman take someone out. That means have someone else fire him. I'm not even going to deal with it. I'll, ha I'll, I'll end it with you. It's like a guy that, that a hitman, take that person out. I'm hiring a hitman to take that person out, meaning I'm not even going to deal with it. I'm just going to ghost you. I'm going to let somebody else take care of it. Maybe that happened, right? Or someone else. I had someone else tell you, you know, I'm in a relationship with somebody else. I didn't even do it myself. I had someone else do it. That's a hitman, right? That one did that to you. Um, that one was, was, was controlling everyone and using their son to do it and hurting everyone and not caring and was going to kill off that little kitten, right? So that, that whole energy is... And I think about that guy that comes back and wants to, wants to uh, make it good, make, make, make good on, on the past. I don't know. That guy last night... <laughs> I wouldn't be I wouldn't be saying yes to that guy. That that's hurting everyone, that's cutting everyone off, that doesn't even have the decency to speak to you themselves. They hire a hitman to take you out, they use their child, they use their own son. Um and they know that the, and their son loves them and they, and they know that they're hurting their son, but they don't care. They don't care because they'll win it at all costs, right? So when I'm talking about looking at a situation yesterday and seeing the best and and uh, wanting to reconcile, sometimes it's not feasible to reconcile everyone. That person's dangerous, right? You don't want that to be reconciled. You want that to be taken care of. I want that taken care of. So we asked for protection. And so when they said, take this kitten, go, take this kitten, that kitten needed to be protected from that one, right? That kitten. Two kittens you must choose. You can't take them both. You love both of them. You have, they both have good qualities, they both have bad qualities. You're worried about that one because you're worried if that one's going to be safe. Think about that. That kitten needed to be taken care of. I was about to leave. I had a car pushed up and I was about to go. But that guy started, but what's he doing? He's manipulating everything, right? And now I'm going to take, I'm, so she says, take this kitten, take this kitten. Well, what if you already had chosen to take the other kitten? Well, somebody has to take care of that. And that's the message here. You are afraid that that one won't be taken care of that that one won't be all right, and Spirit says they will be taken care of. It's not your responsibility to take care of it because one, they're both soulmates, but one you're in love with. One idea you love. It could be a job. It could be a person. It could be animals. You're worried. You feel responsible, and if you think if you don't take care of that one, they're not going to be okay without you, but they are. Spirit says, yes, they are, and right now you're hurting everyone because you're not making a choice. You need to choose. And you need to choose what your heart is calling to. Okay, so there's that. All right, so the items that we're going to choose from, I've got this, you know, feeling in my stomach, and it's not a good feeling, so I'd like to clear it. We're going to choose from the black rose. Isn't that interesting? I watched that black man. So this is a very different, very unusual succulent. It's beautiful. It's tall. I've got another one right here. I got them at the same time, but look how tall this one grew. This one didn't. So they're two of a kind. One is short. One is tall. Both hold a lot of emotional water. Both are roses, black roses, but they're not normal roses. They're different roses, right? This one is turning and going to the light. So isn't that interesting? This one's already facing up in the light. But, but this one looks like it's, it's like, look at this. This head is literally turning and look what's inside. A ladybug. One, two, three, four spots, five spots on that ladybug. Ladybug talks about wishes being fulfilled. Interesting. And then you receive flying towards us. Or is it going away? I can't tell at this point. See, interesting. It looked like it was coming towards us, but it's flying away. It's a blue heron. So the great blue heron, the heron people, we are the heron people. They are patient. They know when to strike. They stand for a long period of time. They have a sharp beak that is used to spear their, their, their prey, also to protect themselves. 
they have very long legs. They're able to stand their emotional waters. They're a jack of all trades, master of none. They, they're, they're dabblers of this and that. They're very unusual. They don't dan dance to your beat. They dance to their own beat. Remember that one that was playing, I want you to fan this music? No, sorry, I gotta go. They don't dance to your beat. They dance to their own beat. And they will look, others look at them strangely for the things that they do. They do things unusually and they see an opportunity when others don't see an opportunity and they know when to dive on it. Not only can they see the opportunity when others don't and know when to dive on it, they will make a success out of something that other people can't even see. Blue herons are amazing. And the ladybug, wishes being fulfilled, something that you have wished for is coming. There were five dots, so there's five different wishes, five different things that can be fulfilled. Five is also the number of uh, significant change that's occurring. Why? Because it needs to, because there's difficulty, because there's confusion, because there's stagnancy, because there's, you're not, we're seeing, uh, we're not seeing eye to eye. I went into my, my bathroom the other day and I ran out of soap, hand soap. Now this is, this is, I ran out of soap and I needed some, so I had to use the, the moisturizing dish soap and I put it in my bathroom pump. So then I went and I bought moisturizing pump soap. Instead of dumping the whole thing out, I didn't have anywhere to put it. So I just put it on top, it's interesting. One was filled with moisturizer, it's literally for hands. One was for dishes. They both clean the dishes, but one is more moisturizing. I, I don't know what, what the difference, I would say because the, the kitchen stuff is, is harsher. Right? So they both clean, but one is more delicate. So when I put, and I, and I said that to my landlord the other day, I'm a cleaner. And so is my twin. We do it differently. It could be your business. I'm a cleaner. I go in and I clean things up, right? Now in my house, I'm the cleaner. That's what I do. We both clean, but we do it in a different way. When I poured that uh, soap into, it looked really cool because the creamy soap went around like spirally. And then, and, and then, it, and then the other soap was around it, it was really beautiful. When I went in to the bathroom to look at it, it completely separated. And as it was going down, it, it stayed separate. It did not mix. Now they might be two of the same thing. Now there could be somebody else in my family or my twin's family, right? They're from the same family, but they don't mix. They're like oil and water, they don't get along. Or there could be somebody that's very much like me, does the same type of work as me, but we don't, you work with dark energy, I work with light. You work with, with uh, you know, I work with angels. I, I don't do binding spells, I don't manipulate. That person is a manipulator. That person that was doing all of that, that person was a magician. That person had gifts. They knew how to use their gifts. They were controlling everyone. They were doing things in a dark way. So there are two of the same, but they're not doing things the same way. Now one is growing taller. One is staying stunted. Now who do you think the magician is? I would say that this one is not as enlightened as this one. This one is blossoming, a lot more blossoms. They started out the same, but this one has stayed there. And look, there's cobwebs around this one. Yeah, this one hasn't moved forward. This one is about to have wishes fulfilled, right? So a significant change that's occurring in our life, always for the better. Good idea to call upon spirit for help with these changes. So you may have started out the same. At one time when we first connected, like that one that was riding the horse in the back field, at first we connected. But I've changed. I'm not who I was then. I've grown and you have not grown. I've watched that. One who follows you isn't necessarily your fan. And what's interesting is the name of the person is my twin. Not my twin that was chasing. It's the person that the other one was talking to. So at one time we, we were friends. We connected, right? But no more. I've changed. I've grown. I, I went on my spiritual journey and I'm not like you. So I'm getting my own messages here. So let's see, we've got the black rose, the big one, the big tall one, and we've got the stunted black rose. We've got the prince. We don't know now if that, if that is actually, we do. This, he looks like a little toad, but he's got a crown. So he is the prince. And I thought about something um, yesterday. I'll show it to you. And that's gonna be our fourth item. This other frog, One has a crown on, right? So he may come from a royal family. He has a crown, but he's a toad. Is he gonna stay a toad? I think he's gonna stay a toad. But then there's this one. This one has a daisy flower on the front of it and it's got the little penis. Remember the little penis frog? So this is a male too. So there's two princes, it looks like, right? Well, this one just has a daisy flower on top. My landlord and I were driving to Costco yesterday and on the side of the road, we saw these tall flowers, mustard flowers. 
right next to it was a sage, a sage bush, and they had flowers too, and they were almost the same color. Not identical, almost the same color. The mustard flowers were a little lighter. The sage, which is the sacred ceremonial cleansing sage, right? The, the sacred Indian sage is what I would call it. They were the same, they were right next to one another. They both had yellow flowers on them, but the flowers that were on the top of the sage bush are in the shape of a daisy on top of this bush, this sacred Indian. But the Indian next to it was the mustard plant. It was tall and gangly. Now this is interesting. This one's tall, this one's short. What we looked at on the side of the road might have appeared that it was short. So now is it the other way around? because things aren't always as they appear, right? You look at that and you think, well, that one's gotten really tall, it's grown. We, and we can use it in that, in that sense. This one has grown many branches. This one has, but this one has been given a bigger pot to expand. This one's been kept in a pot. Plants don't grow bigger if they're kept in a small container. It's the same thing as my dragonfish. Merlin was bought I got him, he was seven inches long, and he was in a little, he was actually in that aquarium when I first got him. And then he started to grow and grow and grow and grow. And now Merlin is huge. If you actually saw him, he's actually curved. He's probably three times, and he, three times the length that he, that he was because the bigger the tank, the larger they can grow. Same with flowers. When I took my plants and I repotted them, they were able to grow bigger. Now, I didn't repot this one. I didn't have a pot for him. So it stayed smaller, wasn't able to grow because it's been constricted. This one has been given more room to grow and it's got a lot of branches. Now let's count how many branches it's got. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. They have the exact same amount of branches, but when the one is kept confined into the small little pot, he's not able to expand. Whereas the other one's been given room to grow, right? So one has been kept constricted. The one that has been repotted or given, how interesting, look, the one that, the one that chases you isn't always a fan. Look at the lion. That's what was chasing. And remember the lion said to the jay, Let's go chase some antelopes. And this one said, I'm not interested if they don't have fur. So these two are partners. So now you look at this and now it's switched. This one looks like he's doing very well, right? He's been given a lot of room to grow. Well, this one's been constricted. This one's been held back. This one's been literally held down. They haven't been able to grow. I have just as many flower heads, roses on me as you do, but, but, but I've been kept tight here. I, I've not been allowed. Why? To me, it looks like this is the father and this is the son. And this is the one who's calling the shots. And this is the one that is using his own son, <clears throat> knowing he's hurting him. Look at him. He's keeping him constricted. This one's given himself a bigger place to expand. Of course, he's done bigger. He's got a bigger pot. He's got a bigger land. You, you've been given almost nothing. And look at the weight. This is interesting. I put this in here to stop him from falling over. I wanted to balance him out, right? But there's a lot of weight here. This one has got lightning rods in it. These are lightning rods. I was, and this one, remember? I was lightning before the thunder. How interesting. So I'm getting all kinds of messages in this. I don't know if you guys are, but this one, I said to my landlord, how interesting that the sage, the sacred sage, the sacred sage, you know what a sage is, right? The sacred sage has a daisy flower on top of his head. This is the sacred, this is the sacred one. Two of the same kind. You, even though you wear the crown, because the Leo wears the crown, right? Leo wears the crown, that's the king. You are the king, you wear the crown, but you're always gonna stay a toad. Whereas this one, this is gonna be the prince. This is the sacred sage. And as soon as this one is given a bigger space to expand and grow, it's gonna take off in leaps and bounds. So I'll be doing that immediately, today. I will be taking the catnip out of that big pot and I'm gonna be putting him in that. 
because green is new beginnings, growth, love, and healing. And when that one gets the ability to grow, it's going to be something else. So these are our items. Wow. I love how spirits talks to me. Doesn't mean I hate my black rose there. Remember, I don't hate my black prints downstairs either. I don't. I, I, it, when you have things pointed out to you, maybe you can change your attitude, right? Hopefully you can. Hopefully you choose to. We all get to change our mind. Maybe you don't realize. Maybe just like that guy last night didn't realize how he was behaving. He wanted to get there so bad. All he could think about was getting there. He didn't realize what he did to everyone else. Maybe you didn't realize what you were doing to your son, holding your son back. Now, does that king, what I said, what I saw was that king that was running was a female. So is it a gay man or is it a feminine energy that's extremely aggressive, right? Controlling, constricting this one, not allowing this one to grow and expand, keeping them smaller because it makes you look bigger. But look at you, you're just a freaking toad. Do you want your son to respect you? He's not like you. Maybe you need to respect the fact that he's not like you. That, that flower that he wears on his head, He's a sacred sage, sacred one. <clears throat> what if this one, what if this one is gay? And that's why he's got a flower on his head and you look down upon him because he's gay. You think you're better than him because you think that's weakness or difference and I'm getting confirmation on that. Maybe that's the situation and yet that one is a sacred sage. Now, maybe you're calling that one that. Maybe they're not gay. Maybe they're more feminine. Maybe they have a, a gentler disposition. Maybe they have a feminine energy, loving, nurturing, giving, kind, sweet, generous. That one is a sacred sage. That's a sacred sage. There was a message yesterday or a few days ago I posted and it said, be very careful of how you treat people. You don't know how powerful and their rank in the spirit realm. You're looking at yourself as the king, but that's how in spirit you, you appear. And you're looking at this one as just this little toad, when in all reality, this one is a sacred, powerful sage. This one helps many people and can help you. So instead of controlling and manipulating, why not work together? Why not be a team? Because you know what? Your son loves you very much. Show the same love and respect for your son. Correct for neutrality on all levels. For those who chose the tall, sacred sage, Well, did you hear what I just said? The tall sacred sage. You both have that. And then notice what I said. Remember, this is turning to the light. These are all facing the light. There's not much facing over here anymore. And this is really turning, really trying to turn, right? I've really turned a corner in my life. And there will be wishes fulfilled for this one, for doing that. It's like that prince that did something that he knows is wrong, right? He beat those people up downstairs. He beat up the cats. We don't hate him. I still love him. But he's not going to live with me, right? Correct for neutrality on all levels. For those who chose the tall sage. I keep calling it sage. The black rose. Serpentine path to power the snake princess okay I just got a hit on that <clears throat> that one could also represent a brother somebody acts like a father it's a mother that acts like a father but a, a brother that acts like what did I get that message everyone thinks my best friend and I are the same person so maybe he acts like he's your dad but he's not maybe he this one looks up to you but in my dream it was a son and a father that was me. But I was in that dream, right? I wasn't the one that was being manipulated. I wasn't the one that was being hurt. I was watching that happen. So remember the one that you're worried about taking, about leaving that one, that that one's going to be abused. No, that one's a sacred sage. That one is, believe me, very taken care of. They're sacred. Spirit will not let anything happen to them. So the number is 42. That might mean something to someone as far as age. Um, four, angels are all around you. You're completely guided, protected, and loved. There is no reason for fear. Two, everything is happening exactly as it is meant to happen with divine blessings for everyone involved. Let go and have faith. And then four and two together is six. Six is victory. Six is um, also a, 
a message from spirit to not be so worried about this material world. Stay focused on spirit. Just like I said, everything's happening as it's meant. There is protection, right? Keep your eyes focused to heaven. So this message forward here, you think about what you're looking at is there's Eve with the apple and the rotten snake coming down, right? That's, that's how the Bible portrays it. But the snake represents your kundalini awakening. It's your spine, your sacred DNA. It's also a symbol of the masculine and the feminine. Look at the two colors. And the snake slithers along the ground. That's the underbelly. That's, that's it's getting down, grounded, seeing what's down underneath. It's your nervous system. It's talking about regeneration and transmutation uh, and transformation is what, as the, as the snake grows, it sheds its skin, which was what we are meant to do as well. The snake is very intelligent. They actually, the snake is there to impart wisdom to you, not to trick you, as the Bible has shown us. It tells you what lies underneath. And what lies underneath in the soil, the crystals of the earth, are very, very important. There's a lot of minerals, ancient worlds, a lot of very important information being held sacred in the earth. It talks about speaking to this snake. Show them who you are. They're not going to bite you. You're not going to get poisoned. Or maybe you are the snake. You're not going to poison another. You're not going to bite another. You're not going to hurt another. You're going to reveal the wisdom that you have within you. This apple that's being offered to you, don't refuse it. This is not something that's there to hurt you. It's there to transform and heal you. So people hear the story of the snake, a fantastic story, and everyone's afraid of how this one manipulated and caused these ones to lose something that was very secret to them, sacred to them, right? People say that the snake is whispering in your ear and telling you secrets, lies, and things that, or things that you shouldn't do, things that would cause you to become banished. Am I the snake right now? Am I doing that? Is that what you feel about me? Right now, the snake is telling you, you are good enough as you are. You are good enough as you are. We're not saying you are better than God. We're not saying you're stronger than God and God's lying to you. What we're saying is you are good enough as you are. You are an innocent person. You don't need to carry the sins that you've been carrying on your back that people have told you that you have flawed yourself or have been flawed in some way. When the snake comes forward, this tree of knowledge that is there is giving you the apple to nourish yourself. It's there to help you. So Spirit says, we're here to heal you and guide you, right? This is, what, this is what's going on. You're not going to be able to get away from the changes that are happening, the transformation, the transmutation that's going on in your life at this time. So you need to use your powers properly. We all have been given gifts. You have to be discerning, right? Like I said, I'm not going to, um, I prefer to, to see that that father realized what he had done and is repentant of that and wanting to allow his son to blossom and be everything that he can be instead of keeping him constricted in that place, in that way, in that manner. I ha he has everything as much as the father has, but he's not been allowed to grow. He's not been allowed to expand. He's been kept in that little box Look at the box. He's been kept in that box. Now that box is purple. That's just spirituality. Have you been kept in a box because of religious preferences? Dad's not. Look at his look at his pot. Terracotta of the soil. It's very funky. It's very it's very different. Right? But you're not allowed. This is a round this is a square box. It's like you're not being able to see he's not been able to, to the live outside of the box of this square box he's been limited in his in his beliefs and in his upbringing right which is what is going on don't be afraid it's time to learn something it's time for you to go into a, a sacred place walk an ancient labyrinth when i went to sedona there's a place called angel valley and there's a giant labyrinth there and that's where the um lemurian worst have known to have had sightings or landings or whatever so I thought oh, interesting to me I, I had a dream about Lemuria I'm, I'm, I've got the mermaid on my stomach right I've, I've got that connection to Atlantis and so I went there and as I walked the labyrinth I, I had a vision I had things come to me I had information that came to me it was really amazing and uh, they're saying that it might be a time for you to do something like this to learn some type of a ancient ritual dance to learn what skin you need to shed at this time and allow something new. Remember yesterday? Go explore, discover. What, what's interesting to you? Try something different. Remember that's what we were advised to do? 
go to the ancient ones and, and bring back the wisdom that you can. Bridge the gap between then and now. Communicate. At this time, you may be able to communicate with the dead. I do. I communicate. They literally come through me as I'm awake. I don't know if you guys have watched it happen in a live reading. I can't remember. But I have done it in private readings and, and in my dreams. Always I communicate. So maybe you have this ability. Some people say that you're very brave. So explore this, this gift that you have. It's a talent that you've been given. This ability to do this. It might scare other people. Maybe that's why they kept you in that little box. They don't want to hear that. They've wrapped you around religion. Told you that that's not right. That, that what you're doing is, is working with demons. That's what my son said. Right? And in, in my dreams, that's what I watched. I watched my son be the father of the one that I loved. That's who they, he represents. He loves his son very much. He calls it, he's, he's his teddy bear. His name is Teddy. And in my dreams, I've watched this one that takes his teddy with him to all of these military places. Well, think about militant, militant style, right? And my son in religion, he takes his teddy bear everywhere with him. They're very close. He loves him. Father, he loves the father so much. But the father's hurt him. Probably more than the son understands. So now I understand who I'm looking at when I see my son in this. It's not my, but it's just showing me the, the religion, how it hurts you. It keeps you in a box. So when you do this, when you share the knowledge that you have acquired and you're not afraid to tap into that, you're helping others expand and grow. And it brings forth a freedom, a sense of freedom for yourself. And there will be all kinds of ancient secrets that will start to unroll for you. You have maybe a lineage. As I said, I saw these Native American. To me, they were Native American, right? The sacred sage. I just watched uh, Mockingjay. Well, it's interesting because from here, it, I mean, it looked like the Mockingjay got, grabbed a fly and ate it. But how could I see a fly from this far away? curious what it what it was able to grab but the mockingjay is a mimic right they can pretend to be anything i can pretend to be a cat i can pretend to be they steal things they they they, they copy they're copycats and he just grabbed something in the air up back there i wonder what it was so again you are strong enough you are worthy enough let's see what the message is from the wisdom of the oracle Am I doing it this way? Or is this going to take too much time? Because we're already at 57 minutes. Maybe I'll let you see the message, but I won't go too deep into it. I'll just read the picture. And this is a reverse deck. Correct for neutrality on all levels. Higher power in reverse. So if, if the higher power, that's your knowledge. Your, your knowledge comes from your third eye. The number is four. Right? Angels all around you. You're completely guided, protected, and loved. No reason for fear. Well, it's in reverse. If you had... And look at the, the man inside here. So that's the divine feminine and the divine masculine within you. But what's standing up, up front, is the divine feminine, which is love, nurturing, energy, um, kindness, gentleness. And look at the deer horns on this one. The masculine energy is being pushed down right? It's, it's telling you to come from more of a place of love. Now, remember those two frogs, right? One thinks he's a king, but he's just a toad. And this one is a sacred sage, right? Why does he, he's wearing a flower on top. Maybe his father disagrees with his lifestyle. That's confirmation. And yet this is the sacred sage, right? That loving energy is what's being focused on here. Now, it's in reverse. So now it's the masculine energy that's overriding the loving energy. So we can come out from a place of aggression and anger, or we can come out from a place of love. I see that father understanding what has happened, just like that guy in the movie last night. He was so hell-bent on getting where he was getting, didn't realize what was happening along the way. We saw arrogance. We saw getting to that place no matter what it does to anyone else. But he's starting to turn towards the light. So we don't want this aggressive, arrogant, bragging energy. We don't want that. That's not what it is. Here, in the upright, you're in the right condition. But this is in reverse. So it's, it's about also, are you connecting to spirit? Because look, at the answers are coming. The key is from spirit. But upside down, you're not, you're not focused on that. The key is not lit up. Now, there's a man and he's upside down. So how much effort are you putting into connecting with 
your angelic team, with your heavenly father, with your spirit guides, with what is sacred and holy? How much effort are you putting in to connecting and communicating with this sacred sage? Are you so busy with your work that you are not connecting with this sacred sage? Now, is this actually a male or is this a female that has masculine energy, but it's also loving energy, right? It could be either. It depends on your circumstance and what story this is for you. But there is a higher power here. So it talks about also the fact that there's a connection between two, the male and the female. There's a sacred bond between you and another, a deep spiritual bond. And this one is essential to your growth and your evolution. I spoke to somebody yesterday and the person in their life has been dealing with drugs, has been dealing with a really a, a group of um, gangsters, like really, really bad, gotten in trouble with the law, gotten all kinds of issues. Um, they're having troubles. Um, the person's cheated on them, lied again and again and again. And yet she has this connection to this one. And so the information that came forward from spirit was you can make him an offer. He made her an offer and it's not going to go that way. It's going to be this way. It's going to be like this. In a wolf pack, there's a male and a female, an alpha male and an alpha female. They take turns taking the lead. Neither one is over the other. They are equal partnership. Right here, upside down, the man is over the woman. Here, the woman is in the lead, but she's looking to spirit. She's not lording over him. She's asking and getting her guidance from spirit, right? So the message that I got with this yesterday, and it goes along with this, is she's going to make him an offer. And she's going to say, I need, you need to let me take the lead. Because at this time, you're upside down. You're not thinking straight. You've been constricted in that little box. I am connecting with spirit. I've grown tall, right? If we go back to the other scenario. I'm not lording over you, but I am telling you that right now, if you want anything to do with me, we need to do it my way. And it's going to be what spirit says. And you need to let me take the lead. And you need to drop your ego enough to allow the feminine to lead and say, this is what we need to do at this time. And I don't mean, you know, I'm going to whip you and boss you around and, and that's the energy that I like. This is love. And this isn't me that's telling what we need to do. It's spirit. So it's like you need to tell him this is what spirit says we need to do and you need to listen and you need to be okay with that. You need to humble yourself enough to know that right now you're upside down and this one is connected and this one can help you because you're both connected. You're coming from a place of love. Okay, this isn't lording over. This isn't control. This is loving direction by somebody who is connecting to spirit and, and knows how to help the situation right now. So there's a huge message in that as well. So it's about tending your spiritual connections, the important things, and remaining true to actually the truth of who you are. Damn, I love that. Okay, correct for neutrality. So that situation could be a female and a male too, right? This one's expanded while you've stayed in that little box. You haven't been able to look outside the box. Why? Because of the situation that we watched. Maybe that's the situation, right? This one, I came with the lion people. Myself, I came with the lion people. I, I came in with the lion people. There's a frog in front of me that's wearing a crown. Is it this one? Right? Inside that box, you're not going to expand if you stay inside that box. When you're out in, the, in the, out in the open, in the soil, and you've got the light, you're going you're to be able to expand and grow. You've got a bigger, natural, surround, more natural surrounding, whereas this is more constricted, man-made. That is more natural looking, earthy, grounded. Right? And what did, what did I, what was I told about, there's so many different stories here, but I have to give you them all as they come. Um, the one who's going through all of these things, when they get away from their triggers, they'll be 98% cured. 98% cured of whatever they are considering to be a problem. They need to get away from their triggers, get out into nature, become more grounded, and they will expand. 98%. Now that, is that what we saw? Is that, that one leaving that box, going over there, listening to the one that comes in? As, I mean, the lion also represents forward movement, right? The lion also represents... Aries people. So it could be, it's also the divine masculine energy. And right now, the divine feminine is also the divine masculine. We all have it within us. Do you have enough humility to allow a female to take the lead in this situation? To take the lead and say, this is what we need to do. You need to listen to me. 
if you can't be in a relationship with somebody where you listen to one another, and sometimes you're the leader, sometimes I am, that relationship is never going to fly. It's not going to work, right? Correct for neutrality on all levels. And the one that's taking the lead, if it is the female, better be listening to spirit, right? And it better be coming from a place of love. And it better be coming from what's best for both of us. What spirit says. Not coming from a place of, because that one's already been in an abusive situation, right? You don't need that. But they're upside down right now and they're not seeing things clearly. Correct for neutrality. For those who chose, gosh, let me see if what, I can remember what we chose. So we have this frog here. We have the black rose. We have gosh, why can't I ever remember? I've got too much going on in my mind. The frog prince. One, two. These are the two frogs. And what was the fourth one? Hmm. I don't remember right now. I'm Ask Spirit to help me. Correct for neutrality. We'll just go on to the Frog Prince down there. Correct for neutrality on all levels. The Frog Prince. Correct for neutrality on all levels. The Frog Prince. For those who chose the Frog Prince. Fairy B. My life is sweet. Victory. Fairy B, my life is sweet. Victory. Six. Number six, victory. So there's a confirmation for victory. Now, what else does the, the fairy bee have to say? The fairy bee says, get busy and get after the honey. Right? You're not going to have anything if you sit there and do nothing. you got to go after it. It does show you that if you do get to work, there's two. There's two fairy bees working together as a team. So it's talking about working as part of a team. The, fairy, the, the bee, the same as the... Um, Hummingbird is aerodynamically incorrectly built. Remember I said, if you can't um, work as a team, if, you, if you're not humble enough to allow one to be take the lead in a situation because you've got pride and arrogance in the way, that team's never going to fly. They're saying that if you can do that, you're going to be victorious. There's two here. And the bee is aerodynamically incorrectly built. It shouldn't be able to fly the way that it does, but it does. It not only flies, it does a, a lot of work. Also, this is a message to me. Every summer, the bees, they need water. And they go to the water and they drown. We can't afford to lose our bees. We need to save our honeybees. And so there's been a lot coming to me. Uh, I saw uh, a jar, a honeybee in a jar on, on the porch. They were building. And uh, what else? I've been seeing a lot about somebody set 250 uh, beehives on fire like who would do such stupidity when we need these right so it's about caring for the bees is what's coming to my mind so what you do is you get a low dish and you can get oops you can get a pretty dish like this is a good example I'll probably do it in this one because this is outgrowing its pot get a low dish like this and you put marbles in the dish or you can get little rocks like round rocks and you fill it with water, but just halfway up the marbles. And that way the bees can get in to get the water. They don't drown in it and they can get away. They need water, right? Everybody needs water, which is emotion. So an emotion is not just regular emotion. It needs loving water, right? So in this card, there are two bees. One of them is, is lacking this loving emotion, needs it desperately. So you gotta, you gotta, you gotta make room for that. You've gotta plan for that. You gotta fill the water up daily because it's gonna expire. It's going to evaporate in the heat, right? So that's just a message right now. You also look at the um, all the things that bees can do. There, there, um, there's so many things that we use the bees' wax for so many different things. Um, it's bee honey is a natural anesthetic. Also, I mean antiseptic. It's also a part of my detox. Remember, I told you I got the the mother, the vinegar with the mother, but I needed the honey in it. So that's a message to myself. My, apple cider vinegar with the mother in it. It's you know I got used to it, but it with honey in it, it's way better. So it's a little honey and a little you know you you get a little further with honey than you do with just vinegar, right? So it's both together. That's why that's so so wonderful. Um, if, look at the honeycomb, the shape of the honeycomb. It's got 
it's like it, it looks like a labyrinth as well, right? Finding all these little it's also compartmentalizing. So what what do you need? To, men are good at compartmentalizing. Women aren't generally as good as, as as men are at that. So it's about learning how to compartmentalize things, right? Don't let that spill over into this. You can get this done. Prioritize. Get things in order. Um, it's also talking about abundance. It tells you that that you will be provided for when you see the bees. So for you, you may say that there's not a lot of sweetness in my honey. All I, I mean, in my life, I've been having just vinegar, the mother with the vinegar. I haven't had the mother with any sweetness. You know, where, where is the happiness and where are the bright flowers and where is the sweetness in my life? I'm watching it in everybody else's. But to me, there is no sun. It's like, it's like this. I don't have any sun. The sun has been denied to me, right? And spirit says, no, the sun has not been denied to you. You've denied yourself the sun. Go where it is. Create it yourself. Create your own happiness. Remember the message yesterday? I, I, I send out happiness. That's my superpower. And everyone benefits from that happiness that comes from me. So Spirit is saying you're the one that has denied yourself of the sweetness in life. You've turned away from the natural world. From the natural world. You think about that man that was so, so hell-bent on getting to that place, right? That he didn't... Everything he did was unnatural. Everything. It was lied. It was forced. It was not natural to him. In order, and he felt he needed that. And so what happened? You've denied yourself the natural world. You've stayed inside that box. This is natural. It's open. It's expanding. It, will you listen? Will you listen now and see the difference? You both were at the same level. You both came together at the same level. And look how tall this one is. And look how stunted your growth has been. You still have all that potential, but you're holding yourself back. Look at that weight you're carrying. Why are you carrying that weight with the crystal on your back? So is there a drug addiction? Or were you searching for, the, for this, for the almighty dollar, going after the finer things? And it's, it's been like a, 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 what is it called, a milestone around your, around your neck. But look, these are four-leaf clovers. There's possibility and happiness. It's even telling you. Will you listen now? I was lightning before the thunder. <laughs> That's me. I was lightning before the thunder. I say that all the time. Now, is that you being an example to someone else, right, in your life? Are you trying to tell somebody or trying to show somebody? Are they going to be open enough to listen? Because you can't tell somebody what to do. You have to be the example, right? My life is sweet. Why don't you start by saying that? My life is sweet. You've spent too much time amongst ones that don't have flowers. This one, this sacred sage, has flowers. Remember that message that we got. When you, have, when you see signs of rain and the color green... You need to listen to wise counsel. And it's going to come from an unlikely source. It's going to come from a little toad. It could come from a female that's got a very masculine energy. There's something wrong with that, right? Look, at this one's got a penis. What does that mean? I, I, I wondered about that a lot because, you know, when spirit asks us to do something and be a leader and to speak up, people are going to look at you. Are they going to think that you're bossy? Are they going to think that you're domineering? Are they going to think that you're a bully? And yet, look, you come from love. The daisy flower is all about optimism and happiness and sunshine. Is this a female? I think so, because this is the sign. We have now got signs of rain, right? And the color green, and the one that's telling you something. And the message was, no matter how high your position is, no matter where you think you come from, it's time to li take, li listen to wise counsel. It's not about listening to your own intuition or what you think that you should do, even though you're the CEO of a big corporation. Now it's time to listen to this one that you think is the little toad. This is all coming together. Even though this is not this one's message. We're talking with that frog down there. But maybe that's how you look at that one. But that one's actually royal. You just see a toad. You're going to talk to me? Look how much, look how expanded I have. Look how much, how much money I have. Look at the status that I've grown to. You're just a lowly nothing over there. Yeah, but I'm in a spiritual box. I'm in a, I'm, I've got, I've got, I'm carrying a large weight, but I'm connected to the crystals. Okay, this, this is going around and it's going backwards. There's so many ways this is speaking to me. Look at me. I am the king. I am a corp, I'm a corporation. I was the lightning before the thunder. I am tall. I've expanded. I have got money. I've got things. I've got people around me. I've got subjects around me. I am the king. You are, are over here in, in, in just this small little box. Look how tall I am and look how short you are. I have just as many roses on as you do. Maybe I haven't been able to get all of that because I've been carrying you. I've been carrying this weight. I've been carrying the crystal children of the world. 
I have growth and happiness all around me. I'm satisfied to be in something smaller because this is spirituality. This color is spiritual. Maybe I haven't been able to accumulate as much as you because of the weight that I've been carrying. Who have you been carrying? You've got subjects doing all of your work. Lots of ways to look at that, right? Dang. Dang. <laughs> Dang. I can't wait to read, listen to this back to myself. So, you're feeling like you don't have anything that, you, that you've desired. Things aren't working out well for you. It's been going not very well. It's been going down, downstream for you, right? But Spirit says, this fairy is here to show you where the honey is. This spirit is telling you how to attract the pollinators, how to attract and get the people to work for you, get things to come to you, get the right connections. Your life can be sweet and, and, and tasty and lovely and healthy and strong and productive, just like these bees are very productive. Because the end of you being so busy and carrying that heavy weight on your back and doing all of this work for everyone else is coming to an end, right? This, you're tired. This is where you're going to be lifted and you're going to experience abundance. You're going to be victorious. So right now, Spirit says, work with flower remedies. I've got rescue remedy in my refrigerator. I'll show you what it looks like if you don't know what it is. This is rescue remedy for pets, but they have it for humans as well. Dr. Bach, my mom studied under Dr. Bach, the Dr. Bach Institute in England, and um, this is part of her, her spiritual work. This is a natural stress relief, and it's amazing. My, I grew up on this. My mom always had rescue remedy in her purse all the time. When I took Willow to Sedona with me the last time, she was terrified on the road, and we got there, and she cried all night long, and I, I thought, what am I going to do, the people next door? So I went to the natural Whole Foods, and I asked if they had rescue remedy, and they had pet remedy. And I gave her, you just give them a little shot of it, and it calmed her, and she never cried again. She was completely, she came out, she was wandering around, totally calm, all natural. So this is tincture, flower tinctures, bulk flower remedies. There's a remedy for everything, and they're all natural. So you might want to explore tinctures at this time. This is also showing me that I probably need to get rescue remedy for me. I, I used to get, um, they have it in the granule form, and I used to put it in my water. There's a store in Sedona that, that sells it, so I'm going to get that when I'm there. It just calms me. It relaxes me. It's, it's amazing. It's amazing, and it's natural. Now, flower remedies, oils, essential oils as well, amazing, because this is coming up at this time, right? Flower essential oils that would help you, maybe for a bath. Now, the nut color, we don't have sun right now here where we're at. So, as I said, my son has sad. When he doesn't get that, that natural vitamin D from the sun, he gets depressed, right? So you may need to go to a place that's a warmer climate. You may need to spend some time in the sun as much as you can, T like have a little sun bath. When my son was a baby, it's interesting now that I look back. I didn't, we didn't know that about him until he was 18, you know, that he would get these little, but we didn't know why he got these little bumps. I had no idea. It took me years to figure it out. But I remembered, uh, I, I wrote about it the other day and I said, Isn't, my girlfriend put pictures of herself and her son and they looked like each other. They were identical. It's like my twin and his mother, they look identical. And, uh, I said, isn't it amazing how you can look at that picture and you can be transported right back to that time and remember those feelings. And the place that I went was when my son came home, he had jaundice. He was yellow. He had jaundice, right? He had all those health problems before he was born. He was in distress. I was in distress. And he was born, a lot of babies are born with jaundice and they need to have a sun bath. And so every afternoon I would lay him on my bed with the sun over his little naked body and he would lay him on my pillow and the sun would come on his body and give him a little sun bath to help heal him. And... This person in my life, this person's father, needs that, needs the sun. I've seen that. And so get out in the sun 10 minutes a day. Taste some honey. I'm so excited about this. I, I was so excited when I saw this at the store. <laughs> now, today I've got everything I need in here. I've got my grated lemon and the lemon rind. I've got my um, apple cider vinegar with the mother and the honey in it. I've got my chia seeds. And it is so good. The vinegar gives it a bit of like, like when you drink uh, soda, you get that kind of fizzy burning. It gives you that. And then it's got the sweetness and the bite and the chia seeds. Oh my God. It does everything for you too. My cats now have it in their water. 
I put a third of a tea, uh, uh, a cup, a third of a capful in each of my water dishes for my cats. They're now getting apple cider vinegar in their stomach. It's amazing. Look what it does. It gets rid of cancer. Kills cancer. Kills any um, third world virus. Kills bacteria. Kills. I mean, it's amazing what it does without harming the positive flora in your body. Okay, I gotta go on. The third item will be this. And we're jumping around back and forth with these guys I know. And I wish I could remember the fourth item. What is it? Correct for neutrality on all levels. Correct for neutrality on all levels. What was it? Correct for neutrality. For those who chose the sage, the wise sacred sage. I'm a sage. <sighs> I like this. This is super cool. What else could that be besides a little penis? I think that's just really funny. Hmm. Correct for neutrality. And I don't know what the fourth item was. Did I choose a fourth item? I did. Correct for neutrality. I don't know what it is. Hmm. For those who chose the sacred sage, snake princess. I like that. So interesting. The sacred sage and the tall one are the same, or they get the same message. We already know what that is. Oh, there's our message. Okay. The black cat. That's interesting. Lost magic. Now, Prince is the black cat. The one that came out of the drug house we spent $3,000 on. It wasn't his fault. By the way, let me tell the story of him. He wasn't a drug addict cat. He was sick and he went to the hospital and they over-medicated him. So think about that in human, I've seen that a lot. People give somebody the wrong medication, they over-medicate them, and then his body literally had to go through withdrawals. It was horrible to watch. Also, he, be, went from a male to a female. So somebody was emasculated and went, it, it had to be done. It had to be done. So you think about that, about do you have a, the humility to allow this to happen, right? To allow a female to speak or are you a very arrogant, controlling, narcissistic, nasty person? You got all upside down and, and that had to be shot down. That had to be shot down. That had to be killed. You had to be turned into a feminine energy, loving, nurturing, energy. That's what happened to Prince. We took him away from a drug house. The people that were there were the drug people. They were very unusual. Very, they've been stereotyped. They absolutely have. And my landlord calls them the skull people because they look bad, right? They're, they're, they're covered in tattoos. Their yard was filthy dirty. They had, the girl has blue and purple dyed hair. They had old junky cars in their driveway. They're, they're definitely from the rough side of the tracks, right? And they didn't belong in this area, right? I came from the wrong side of the tracks. But I said, and the woman had a little, a little Maltese, a little dog that she would walk and she would dye the dog's hair that same color as hers. So she was, she was that kind of darker, heavier energy, right? And we, and that's where he was from. Now, I would watch that house as I would drive by and they started cleaning up their yard. And they've done a really beautiful job. They've totally cleaned up their yard. Everything's cleaned up and he still calls them the skull people. He's, they're different. Doesn't mean that they're bad people. They, they had to clean up their life. Their things were a mess and they did, they cleaned it up. So that's the house he came from, however, right? It was rough when it was, it wasn't cleaned up when he left there. It's cleaned up now, which makes me think of this one that's, that's very aggressive and has been very controlling and very abusive, right? But now it's changing. Things are changing. I like that. Okay, so here, you see the scarecrow in the field and you see this one holding on to her black cat and she's very sad. And there's crows, the crow family, right? The crows, that's who they are. And they're hanging out with that scarecrow or that scarecrow's hanging out with those crows coming in from the void, from the dark side. Remember the crows that were always interfering and, and um, causing confusion and and stealing things and that's who he's hanging out with. Why are you hanging out with those people? Well, he's out there trying to look scary and, and mean because he and, and he's hanging out with them because he's been hurt. 
And he's trying to scare away everybody, but he's hurt her too. And that black cat, he's hurt that prince too. Now, it could be a she. So we're gonna go back and forth between he and she, okay? So someone in your life, because we don't know if this is a male or a female, because it can apply to anyone. This, this Leo or this king or this, you know, I was shown it's a Leo, but whoever. It, for all intents and purposes, it could be somebody embodying embodying that energy, right? It could be any sign. So someone, a male or a female, has tried very hard to be harsh and scare people away. They're lonely and, they're, and they have pain inside of them and they have, because of that, and then because of them not wanting to look at that, it's caused them to be callous. It's caused them to say hurtful things to other people because they haven't looked at this and they haven't owned the pain and scars that they've been carrying. They haven't looked at that. Maybe there's a scar on this one in the feminine area. Maybe this one's been abused, sexually abused, because I have. Maybe that's what that little scar is showing right there, right? So this one has had pains. And if you, this is the one that says, I'm gonna hurt you before you can hurt me, right? That's, what, that's how I protect myself. You're not gonna get me, I've already been hurt. So I'm gonna lash out at you first. But what's going to now land on the arm of this, of this scarecrow is not one of the crows, but this is a raven. Raven is magic and miracles. Remember the, the ladybug that landed over there for failing wishes? Well, the, the raven now comes. And the truth is going to come out because of the raven. It's magic. Because of magical miracles that take place, some chain of, churn of events is going to cause the truth to come out. And when the truth comes out, an apology is going to be said. And this one will be cared for again and the magic of her little cat will come back to this cat. Because right now, it's a time for somebody to use soft words. It's a time for somebody to acknowledge what they have said and what they have done and apologize. And then they have to forgive themselves for doing it. Something really awful has happened. Something really sad has happened. And who all is feeling lonely? Everyone is feeling lonely. Remember I said yesterday, you can look at this situation and at that these ones that have hurt others and manipulated and you can be angry at them or you can ask for a sense of peace to come upon this situation. Now remember I said there's a secret. Somebody knows. If they come forward and they speak the truth, it's going to cause upset. Someone's going to be mad at them for sure. It's going to cause upset. But in the end, it's a blessing for everyone involved and it couldn't happen unless that person was brave and courageous and came forward and did it. But then I said, instead of looking at that, why don't you look at that and say, I could be the catalyst. Right now, everybody's segregated. Everybody's in separate corners. Everybody's sad. Everybody's unhappy. I know something. And if I say this, yep, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a backlash, but everyone's going to benefit in the end. And it's because of me, because I did this. I had information that I was to give my twin soul seven years ago, six and a half years ago. And I knew that if I told him, he was going to get a be angry at me with what I told him because who I saw him with. And Spirit said, you know what you have to do. And I saw something. And if I didn't tell him, he could have been killed, hurt, or gone to jail with what I saw. That's what I saw. Now, maybe it was all symbolic. I didn't know at the time. All I knew was he was going to be mad at me for what I had to say. And I said to him after I told him, I would rather have you never speak to me again than be hurt. So I'm saying what I have to say. And he didn't talk to me. But Spirit said, after a while, it's going to come to light and it's going to all turn in your favor. Now, it's been a long time, right? It may not happen overnight. But right now, somebody needs to speak the truth. They need to understand why have I been sad? Why have you been sad? Why, what part did I have to play in this? We all have a part to play, right? In every situation. So this is about speaking kind words. This is about speaking words of friendship. This is about learning who can I rebuild a friendship with? And this is about learning who to walk away from. Because right now you're feeling like everybody's getting something and you're not, right? It didn't go my way. Why didn't it go your way? You contributed in some way. We all have lessons that we've had to learn and we've all grown. Not any one of these people, not any one of these people is 100% innocent. Right? Everybody has a part to play because everybody has a different way of looking at it. But somebody has really hurt somebody. Somebody has said mean things and, and hurt a lot of people and someone knows about it. And so this isn't about blaming. This is about wanting everybody to come together and benefit, right? So if you can acknowledge the part that you've had in it 
and understand, okay, you're right, you know what, you did that, but yeah, I understand what you were thinking or what, you know, I, I never looked at it from that perspective before. Like that guy, he, he thought that he was aspiring to something good. That's what we're supposed to do, right? Reach for something better. He didn't know, he didn't realize he was pushing his friends away. He didn't realize he, you know, I was so busy working. I got so caught up in my work that I didn't see what was going on. I didn't understand what happened and maybe I didn't do it all, but maybe because I wasn't paying attention, somebody else came in and did something. I, I don't know, but I was, this needs to be taken care of. This needs to be rectified, right? So if you have done something, say you're sorry, ask for forgiveness. And if somebody is asking you for forgiveness, be understanding. Try and, and remember that person that came forward and I said, Nan, I don't want anything to do with that guy. Are you kidding me? That guy was mean. That guy hurt his son. He knew he was hurting his son. He didn't care. All he thought about was himself. He didn't care what happened to his son. He just wanted to be successful. But maybe in his own mind, he thought, no, nope, I heard last night. No, nope. no, he knew what he was doing. He was being very selfish. But that doesn't mean he doesn't get to change his mind doesn't mean he doesn't he hasn't learned maybe he had something happen to him and now he's learned the hard way right so try to be understanding try to understand that if you continue the cycle of trying to self-protect by, by behaving in this manner you're only going to keep re repeating the cycle and, and keep the damage flowing it's there's no resolution nobody wins in this situation and at this time the messages have been what has been happening has happened because of jealousy like I said, maybe you weren't aware of what's going on. You were so hell-bent on getting ahead, you didn't even realize that you had found yourself straying off your path. And while you did that, other people came in and did things. They didn't know what was going on. They thought they were, you know, you told them to take care of things, so they did. You weren't busy. You were too busy. I didn't even know that that happened because I wasn't thinking about you. I was thinking about myself. And then somebody over there had their own agenda. Somebody was jealous, and so they, they, they contrived something. And now this is a big disaster going on because they say that what's been happening here is jealousy, unhealthy energy, and it leads you to feel constricted. It leaves you feeling empty. So forgive yourself, speak the truth, make amends, and then watch yourself grow from that to that quickly. Okay, correct for neutrality on all levels. What is the message from this deck for those who chose... We did the black rose, we did the prince, we did the frog. The last item, which for God's sake, I can't remember what the hell it is. How weird is that? I wonder if I didn't choose anything. If I didn't choose anything, it's going to be the sun. Looking at the divine masculine. I don't know what it was. I thought I did. Correct for neutrality. For those who chose that little daisy frog. Round and round and round. <laughs> okay. Round and round it goes. It's in the upright, thank God. Because the number is two. Everything happening exactly as, 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 as it is meant to with divine blessings for everyone involved. But there's a number five because there's been problems, right? There's been lies. There's been deception. There's been nasty words spoken. There's been things that have not been going well. There's been fighting. And because of that, a significant change needs to happen. And because of that, a significant change is happening. Because two and five together is when you follow your spiritually illuminated path, it will exceed your expectations. So can that situation be turned around just by one individual? Maybe I look back and I think to myself, maybe he listened to me. Maybe he didn't get mad at me. Maybe he heard what I had to say. And because of what he heard, he took steps. I hope so. Because if you follow your spiritually illuminated path, it will exceed your expectations. So something keeps going around and around in circles. It's not getting anywhere. You're going around and around. So you're being challenged to break a cycle. Maybe you're revisiting. It's like Mercury retrograde again, going back. Here it comes back around again, that same old story to be reviewed. Remember somebody's coming back from the past to talk to you? So it might feel that we're going backwards. But when you look at it closely, you're, re you're really not going around and around. It's like going up, there's this tower in, in, in the Grand Canyon that you go up, it's really cool and it's got stairs that spiral up. And so you get to the middle section and then it kind of goes around, all the way around, just like a flat space to give yourself a, a breath, right? Because like, or like if you're climbing to the top of the Statue of Liberty, freedom. You've got a lot of people that are coming up behind you, so it gets tiring. You can't keep going, 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 going up on the mountain. You've got to stop and give yourself a break, right? Give yourself a bit of a rest and then you're going up again, and that's what it is. You're going around and you're going up in all reality. 
So when you come back around and that situation revisits itself, you got to look at it. Where was I last year at this time? Or last time I went through a situation like this, here comes that same energy. Remember, there's somebody coming back because they think, they know, they, they've they come in and out of your life and they, they think they have the right just to walk into your life whenever they feel like it. But now when this person comes back around, you're not the same person, right? You've changed, you've grown, right? I'm not in that little box. I've grown. So I'm. you're not facing the person that you faced the last time. Hopefully they've changed. But we've been shown that somebody that comes back hasn't. Somebody has, somebody hasn't. So you are supposed to take stock of where I was. Where, where am I now? How did I get here again? Am I feeling the same familiar energy between this and another person? What can I do differently this time? What have I learned? Because it's a mix of, of good and bad, right? Okay, I don't like the situation that I'm looking at. I'm here again, but I'm gonna do things differently this time. I'm not gonna be afraid. I'm not going to lash out. I'm not going to go right back. I'm not going to allow somebody to tell me what I know I should do even though they think this is better for me. No, this time I make my choices based on what my soul is asking for. So have you learned? Are you gonna to choose to behave differently at this time? Don't blame, this isn't about blaming. This is about I'm doing things different this time, right? And maybe you'll be an example and, and, and they will too. So then the last item, which I don't know what it is. Don't know what it is. It's kinda of like where I'm at. Don't know where I'm at. Don't know what's happening actually. I'm just staying open. Correct for neutrality on all levels. What is it? <sighs> that was clear. A beautiful little worm. That's where I'm at. Rest and recuperate. It's time to take care of yourself. That's what I'm doing. When I go to Sedona, it's raining too. And I sleep really well in Sedona and I sleep in the rain really well. I won't have my cats waking me up all night like they do, right? And the bed that's in this Airbnb has got a, a, a mattress that is amazing so I, I know I need to get a new mattress I need to get like a topper that's a little more secure so this is about that you've come out of a difficult situation or you've been just doing too much and you're exhausted I, I feel in the back of my throat thank goodness I got my apple cider vinegar because I feel in the back of my nose a threat of a cold and I'm not getting it I don't allow myself to get sick but I've pushed it I have pushed it so this is your message this is time to take care of yourself one keep your thoughts positive you're gonna focus on everything's working out it's gonna work out, maybe not the way you are imagining it, but it's gonna work out for the best, right? You're gonna let spirit handle it, and you're just gonna do what spirit tells you to do. What do I have to do? One thing at a time. What do I need to do? I need to pack. Today, my phone didn't ring, why? Because I need to just relax, I need to chill. I'm not worried, remember I said? I'm not gonna worry about it. Um, if the phone doesn't ring, whatever I'll need, I'll get a call later, in the, and I did. I got a call, and, and I actually got two calls, and it paid for my entire day, because I'm not worried. I've got a team, right? So don't worry. This is about climbing in. Look at this little worm. She's, this little worm is transforming. Right now, this one's a caterpillar, but in the life of spirituality, it happens quick. This is gonna turn into a butterfly. This one is snuggling this one, taking care of that little boy. Remember that little boy with the father that was so controlling and abusive? <clears throat> that little kitten, that little boy, that little kitten, it was the same thing. It was the same scenario. Take care of that one, right? Love that one. So at this time, you might be feeling sniffles. You might be feeling achy. You might be feeling maybe you've got the flu. But there's butterflies. There's, they're blue. The butterflies are blue. So there's maybe sadness that's been around you. But it's transforming into something better. These roses. There's like Mrs. Rosewood there. Her roses ended up being, it was interesting, because when I first saw her, she was pink, right? And Mr. Rosewood was all yellow roses. And then she's getting better. This isn't, this isn't actually dust. This is... Um, baking soda water that I put on to get rid of the little bugs. So she's getting better. And, and yet look at this rose. This rose is yellow with pink around the edges. This one is sacral chakra, but there still was pink around the outside edge. This is a peace rose that grows on Mrs. Rosewood. I like that. Remember I said for me and myself, I choose peace. <laughs> so that's me. I choose peace. This one's all pink. That was my mom right? My mom's in spirit. That's unconditional love. 100% pure. So you see this one is snuggling that little kitten, that little bear, that little, that, that, that son, that one. Taking care of this one, loving this one, nurturing this one. Maybe this is a part of you, right? 
But this is a time for soft blankets. This is a time for quiet music. This is a time for gentle activity. This is a time for not expecting perfection. You're going to keep your thoughts positive. And if you do follow your spiritually illuminated path, which means if you do pay attention to the messages that spirit brings you at this time, everything's going to exceed your expectations. And then one and seven together is abundance. It's, it's the infinity symbol. It's a soulmate connection, infinitely supplied, everything that you need. You have everything you need to move forward, light worker. Stop procrastinating, right? It will exceed your expectations if you follow the light. Look at the color of this also. It's yellow, the divine masculine, but it's got pink edges. So this is actually a female toad. The one that, why should I listen to you? You're just a little toad. This one carries the symbol of peace on their forehead, the daisy flower, happiness, positivity, right? This one's got scars too. This one has been sexually abused. This one knows how to hop away from toxic energy. This is, this is the color of love. Growth, new beginnings, love, softness, gentleness. A time for restoration, a time to slow down and wrap yourself up in, in something gentle. Take shelter from a lot of people, from the parties, from the crowd, from the businesses, from your work. It's important to treat yourself gently. Ooh, look who came. Wow. Hello. Are you going to come join us? Is this the raven that's come to apologize? Wow, that was pretty cool. Ooh, look at the clouds over there. This is, this is good sleeping weather. Right? This is a good time to snuggle up. This is a good time to slow down. If ever there was a time for an afternoon nap, this is it. Right? Eat the best foods. Drink warm teas. Drink chili. Drink warm teas. Drink, eat food like chili, soups, comfort. This is comfort food. Comfort weather, comfort food. Right? This is a time where Maybe other people are looking at you very strangely, that you're, you, you are transforming into something right now. You may feel very insignificant, or they may think that you're insignificant, right? It's kind of like the sparrow. Who pays attention to the sparrow? Uh, Aphrodite, because it's her pet, and uh, it's the victory sparrow, right? The underestimated one. Maybe you think nobody cares about you, that you're not very important, but clearly someone loves you very, very much, and this one will love you and care for you more than you've ever felt before. This one will encourage you to rest, to exercise, to be kind to yourself, to show you what you need to build yourself up, to be an example, right? This one will help you, take you away somewhere where you can escape and where you can relax. Escape all the frustrations, escape all of the ripples on the water. Look at the water, the emotional waters all churned up right now big waves coming in right why don't you go with the flow and allow this spirit to lead you this spirit to guide you this spirit to love you why don't you allow that you might be feeling a little bit vulnerable but worms are very intelligent actually and they're very capable they're underestimated just like the sparrow there may be psychic energy being thrown at you I, I, I'm getting this message for myself, absolutely. This is all a talking about me, right? This could be that person, that, that, that person that spoke before that was nasty, right? Psychic daggers thrown at you by somebody who feels that you've rejected them. You've rejected them and now they're pissed off and they're gonna be throwing that energy at you, right? They, and why is it that they feel that you've rejected them? Because you've changed. You're changing into something different and it makes them uncomfortable. They don't like it. They want you to stay the way they, that you were. Where's my mom? Where's my dad? Where's my brother? That's not who you were even last week. Yeah, but I've changed my mind. I've seen the light. I'm turning towards the light. Okay, well, we know all about your secrets. How will they feel? How will she feel? How will he feel if we tell those secrets? Go ahead and tell. Go ahead and tell. Because there is nothing. What was the message that I got yesterday? I put it out. <sighs> Oh, I've got to get it because it's really good words. Hi, baby. Hi, honey chicken. Hi. I like him outside. I have it on the tip of my tongue and I can't bring it in, so I have to do this. Sorry. <laughs> what if they tell my secret? That's blackmail. 
That is so not cool. That is not a friend. That is not family. That is not love, right? I'm going to tell that secret. And when they find that out about you, when she finds out what you did and what you said about her, because in this movie I watched last night, when he went and he was with that really fancy girl, she made fun of the other girl, the way she was dancing, the way she was behaving. And um, she says, look at her. She, what a freak. And he looked over at her and he goes, yeah, she's, She's a nut, but he was smiling, right? He was smiling because he actually really liked her. But prove it, right? You said this, you said that, you said all these things. And I put up a, um, a video of a, a man and woman that were gonna get married, right? And she calls him and she says, this is the most exciting day of my life. And he says, um, I'm really nervous here. I, I, I need to, you know, this is make me very uncomfortable. And she's like, she's talking away and you know, she's on the way to the wedding. And he's, you see that he's on the phone and she's on the phone. All of a sudden they pass by. He's leaving. She's going forward. And she goes, what's going on? And he says, I can't do this. And so the message was, even at your best, you will never be right for the wrong person. And even at your worst, you will never be wrong for the right person. Did I say that right? At your best, you'll never be right for the wrong person. And even at your worst, you'll never be wrong for the right person. Okay? So what if they find out? Go ahead. Tell them. Because if what they find out causes them to turn away from me, they weren't right for me to begin with. So, psychic daggers. That one didn't get what they wanted, right? Now they're pissed. Remember the song we began the whole reading with? How that comes back. The song we began the whole reading with, you don't want me, you don't want my love, you just want attention. You're just angry that seeing me with somebody else. So this person has moved on and remember someone was coming back from the past and you were gonna say to them, no way, sorry, we're done, it's over. I, I don't want that, I've made my choice. I made my choice, I know who I'm going with and it's not you. Well, you've wanted that person all this time. Yeah, but now I've learned, right, what that was and it's not right, you're not right for me. And no matter what goes on, you're never gonna be right for me. So that may be going on as well, right? This is about resisting old negative patterns too. I spoke about that this morning, I guess. I can't remember what the post was, but I did. Speaking about, it's about changing negative patterns at this time. So it leaves you kind of feeling in a weakened state, a vulnerable state. You know, you're being attacked by that energy that's coming at you. So this someone feels rejected because you've changed or you've rejected their offer. Um, so it's about taking comfort right now and getting away from that energy and, and going with and being around softer energy or going alone and being there on your own. Just holding, holding up in your own place, taking care of yourself, right? And the beings or the people that watch over you, they do care for you. So you could, if you're going to stay home, you could spend time re rearranging, redecorating, moving things around. Remember what I watched? That person that was leaving, my friend, she was, she was picking up pieces and, and, and that person, that, that, that mean, nasty person was taking the best of everything of hers and this person was just taking what they, what they needed to carry. Is that what's going on? Are you leaving a situation and you're, you're not even gonna worry, keep it, keep it. I'm not taking the best of it all, you can have it. I'm just happy to go, right? I'm gonna get out of here. Or you could be just basically spending time in your own house, rearranging. I'm thinking about packing stuff up because I've got a decision I have to make, right? As soon as I get out there. <clears throat> so, or you could be somebody that just needs to just take the day and chill out. My landlord's working, working, working. He works himself into a frazzle. He's like my dad. And then he's, you know, to the point where he can't even move and he's lying in bed in agony. You don't have to get to that point, right? Just hang out in your house, snuggle up, watch a movie. Clean up your, your I, I have something wrong with my internet. I, I, I went to try to move pictures to my photo album and it's locked and all of a sudden it doubled all my pictures on the front of my, I'm like, oh God. So I gotta spend time going through and deleting all of those. So just sit there and do something like that. Delete old files, right? Organize things. There's somebody near you that you can trust. There's somebody near you that will care for you. And you need to rem remember to take your discomfort and care for yourself because You've got to build your energy up and, and soon enough your energy will be back. Now I have to drive seven hours to Sedona in the rain, through rainstorm. I'm going to be tense. I already know that. If it's, if it's bad weather and there's traffic all over, I'm going to be tense. So I need to rest. That's why I'm not busy today. I need to rest. I'm going to, I'm going to have a nap with Liger. We're going to sit on this chair and we're going to have a nap. I like that idea. 
So for the last card, I can't get over that I don't know what the last item was. I am and Willow talking. Okay, this was upside down and it's Treasure Island. So you see this, this sea turtle, this ancient one. Sea turtles are very connected. They're very knowledgeable. They live a very long time. And it's got a treasure chest on his back. He's out in his emotional waters and look at all the butterflies and, and hearts and starfish and everything that's flying all around this treasure chest. And this guy's on the move, right? Moving across his emotional waters with that treasure chest. But he's upside down. And the number is nine. You have everything you need, light worker, to get moving. Stop procrastinating. Remember that person in my, in my dream wasn't taking all the best things. They were only taking a few things. They let the other person have the other items. So upside down, at this moment, I mean, here, you're attracting all of this to you. Or you've accumulated all of this to you. But in the reverse, you feel like you don't have enough. Right? You, what I thought I was going to, I lost it all. I lost all of it. Everything I worked for. Now I'm out there crying in these emotional waters. I'm emotionally upside down, right? My head's underwater. I'm breathing, but my head's underwater. And all my money's gone. Or what I was working for failed. It completely failed. This whole project is tits up, right? Or maybe are you avoiding being successful because you're so worried that if I get out of that box, I'll grow tall like that and then I'll be a mark and someone's going to come along and shut me, shut me down or cut me down, right? So you don't want to step outside of that box. Is that you? Is that what's going on? Are you caught in fear? Thinking that whatever I've gotten, I'm going to lose. I'm going to lose what I've got. And so I'm holding on to it so tight, I'm misering. This is like the four of... Um, four of pentacles. I'm holding on so tight because I'm afraid that I'm going to lose everything. And so I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to spend a dime or I'm not going to, I'm not going to stretch. I'm not going to, I'm not going to step out. I'm worried. So you're being challenged to see what you're doing right now. You're looking at things from a limited perspective, perspective. Nothing is impossible. Remember yesterday's reading? Nothing is impossible for you. Nothing. Right? If you, if something dumped out, it wasn't even your highest good. The opportunity wasn't what wasn't going to take you where you thought it was going to take you. It was going to take you somewhere else, somewhere negative. Also, don't stay stuck upside down. Now, here's my message. From this whole reading, I finally get my message because I am concerned. I'm thinking about this option that's in front of me, right? And it's saying, take a risk. you got nothing to lose. The only thing that's keeping you stuck is you. You're being stuck. You're keeping yourself stuck. You say you want to move on. You say you, you, you want to get to a place where you can hike around, you want to be in nature, you want to expand, you want to explore. Every time you've done something before and it was scary, you said it was the best thing that ever happened for you. Why are you holding back? Take the risk, right? Open the door because the abundance that you want is going to come to you. You don't have to go looking for it. It's going to come to you. I like that. It's going to come to you. Don't go looking for it like a lot. All right. So for those who, um, no, we're done. I was going to say for those who, and we'll go to the next one. I keep going, going, going. See, I keep going, going, going. It's time to chill. Because look who's waiting for me. Time to have a nap with my big boy. So I hope you guys are going to have a good day. I don't even know what day this is. It's almost the weekend, right? So take some time to relax. Be careful when you're driving, because I did see an accident. I did see an accident. That was a message I should send out. Whoever is driving on the road, and that would be me, don't take any risks. Watch your speed. When we have rain, after no rain for a while, there's oil on the road, so there's slick, right? And all of a sudden, people are hydroplaning. I did see an accident, and I, I saw um, a girl get out of the car. She was okay uh, from the back seat. One, there was a guy, two guys and a girl in the car, and one guy was driving like a mad person, and we kept telling him to slow down, and he didn't, and he crashed into a glass building, and I didn't see him again. I saw her, and I was, I was there, but I didn't see him. So... Remember I told you I heard of a death on the road, so be very careful. It could literally be literal. So if anybody would like help with a dream analysis or with a private reading, Sherry Columbus is my name. Uh, SherryColumbus at Yahoo.com is my email address. My website is www.TheAngelsWhisper.com. If you're new, welcome. Please click like, subscribe, and share if you found this to be of benefit. Don't try and fit a situation into your life that is not yours. Don't get paranoid about something. If it connects with you, you you'll know it's yours. 
it may be connected to somebody else in your life. Like I said, those two that I watched, the son that loved the father, the father that was abusive to the son, could have been, I'm watching somebody else watching another person's life. So it doesn't necessarily have to be who you think it is. Just stay open. I'm seeing a white crane come across the water. Everyone's flying right now. White crane across the, across the water. A white swallow, which is a harbinger of hope. The beginning of spring and summer. A crow. Everyone's quiet, but everyone's on the move. So there's another message. Don't necessarily tell everybody exactly where you're going. Everybody's quiet. Everybody's on the move. A lot of heavy contemplation happening right now. So do that. Take a little time to think. Take a little time to let this sink in, right? And then wait and see what other messages come to, to back up what you've already gotten. I've got so many things that I said in so many different scenarios. I need to listen back to this. I'm going to do that with my eyes closed. I'm going to just lay here and I'm going to listen back because I need to hear myself. So have a beautiful day. I love you guys. Peace.